Hello friends and welcome at my channel. Today I would like to do one more video about combinatorics and today I would like to tell you the difference between permutations and combinations. So what is the basic difference? The basic difference is if we're talking about permutations we do care about the order of the elements, all right? So that means if we just say we are uh, having let's say seat number one, seat number two and seat number three then let's say seat number one is more expensive than that seat number two. So even though if let's say two males and one female sitting on those um, um, places, the price of the first maybe is way higher than the price of the second and the, uh, the, the price of the third is lowest. So that means that if we have F and M, it's a totally different combination. So that that's that situation, okay? Permutation takes care of uh, order of the elements. Combination does not. All right. So we have basically four cases that we have to go through. The first one is, or let me just give you give you a um, basic idea. We have, let's say, fifteen students, fifteen students. So I'll do an example. I'll explain how to calculate this. And then we'll try to derive a basic formulas for arbitrary value of n and arbitrary value of k. So we have 15 students in the class, and just three students are lucky enough to get to, to get tickets. Okay, to tickets soon. Let's say um, Corona time is over at some point, and we are lucky to go to I don't know to Madison Square Garden to see. Jay-Z performing with uh, Beyonce, for example. All right, so 15 students we have. We have three students that are lucky to get tickets to this concert. And we have um, four cases, as I told you. So I started to talk about permutations. So let's say the number, the seats are placed. Uh, the seats are numbered, sorry. So we have numbered seats, numbered, numbered seats this is like a one two is unnumbered right so for example unnumbered so for example um just all the places are without seats you're just dancing on the dance floor and you have also cases alpha where um well every student um is allowed to take only one ticket one ticket only one ticket per student and case beta is um every student every student uh, is allowed allowed to take to take up to three tickets that's a huge difference between alpha and beta. For example, I'm the first student and I'm like having two more friends and they would like to come with me. So I'm, if, if I'm at the first place, I'm taking all, all three tickets and nobody behind me is getting any ticket. Even though number two and number three students are also chosen, they, they have nothing. At the same time, I could say, well, I don't like this concert. So even though I'm I'm taken as the first. I don't want to take any ticket. Okay, so I'm giving the tickets away, and student number two or student number three are deciding who going to take how many tickets. So that's the situation, basically. All right. And what we want to understand now is how to compute it. So let's go for it. So as you may see, guys, every time we're talking about case one, it's always about permutations. All right, because the seats are numbered. So these are permutations and these are combinations if we do not care about the numbering. So I gave you an example with prices, but it could be something different. So it doesn't matter which category we are preferring, but there is a difference between place number one and place number three. That's it. All right. So let's talk about one alpha. That would mean we have numbered seats. And we have every time one uh, ticket per student. So what does that mean? 
Well, that means imagine you have um, 15 uh, students. This is uh, all, let's say, A1, A2, and so on, A15. You've got 15 students. And, well, how many um, possibilities do you have to permutate them freely? Well, if you remember, in the last video we've been talking in, in the playlist of combinatorics, we discussed it's 15 factorial. But you see what's happening now. Um, I have to care about the numbers of the seats, and every student is getting only one ticket. So what does that mean? That means we got 15 factorial, all the students behind A1, A2, and A3. So the first three places, like we're permutating, permutating, then I say stop. So you freeze. The first three places are getting tickets because in this uh, situation, we're picking every student one ticket. And number four up to 15 are left empty. So no tickets for them. All right, so what, what does that mean? Well, that would mean we have, um, normally, if you remember binomial coefficient, we would be taking three factorial out of the game and 12 factorial. And this is how we've been doing, but this is not quite the case here. Why not? Well, because the tickets are distinguishable. So that means even though this is ticket one, this is ticket number two, and this is ticket number three, we cannot, we cannot uh, treat them like they're equal because they're not. Okay, because the seats are numbered. So tick, ticket number one could be better than ticket number three or vice versa. That means we basically do this one. We're not talking about the cases from one to three, but we're talking about A4, A5, and so on up to A15. So we're kind of having one because every of this six combination, I hope you remember this, so kind of three factorial is important for us because we can make a distinguishing between them. Okay, look at the left hand side here. MMF and FMM is not the same. That's why we're not dividing by this. But we're taking off what we do not need, and we do not need the positioning about the 12 students behind us. Okay, so like everything we can get away. So that means we're having 15 factorial. Let me write this slightly different, uh, differently down. So we kind of having 15 minus 3 factorial. This is how we come up with 12. Okay, and I hope you see the general idea is if you have n factorial and you are uh, having k places that you are um, keeping like uh, um, separately and n minus k places that you don't care about, you are just having n factorial divided uh, by n minus k factorial, or we call it n permutate k. Okay, not choosing permutated. N, P, R, or in my case, K. All right, there you go. So we can compute it. This is 15 factorial, which is 12 factorial times 13 times 14 times 15 divided by 12 factorial. And now I'm multiplying 13 times 14 times 15. So 15 times uh, 15 is 225. Having 14, so it's 200. 10, and we're multiplying 210, 210 times 13, it's 2100, 630, 2630, 630, I said, yes, 2730, if I'm right, don't kill me for that, if I'm making a mistake here, uh, then we, we move on, all right, so we still are at permutations, but now we are allowing every student uh, to take as many cards as you want. We just only have three cards available. So everybody, let's, let me put it here, three tickets. So everybody is allowed to take as many cards as you wish, as long as you're not getting over three. So what does that mean? Now think about it. We can talk about the possibilities um, how many students could get how many cards? So, for example, in the previous situation, if I am the first student, or whatever student I am, the first, the second, the third, whatever now, I'm one of the group out of 15 persons, uh, I could only have at most one ticket. So most probably I'm getting uh, without any tickets, getting home because 
only three out of 15 are getting tickets and maybe I'm not lucky enough. So most probably, most of us are not lucky enough, as you can see, because 12 are unlucky and only three are lucky, but everybody's getting exactly one ticket. Now, the situation is different because if I'm lucky to be in the group of three students, I could not only have one, I still could have it, but I'm having also maybe two, maybe three, or even though I'm inside the group which is chosen out of three students, I'm not interested in this concert and I'm not taking the tickets at all. So that means every ticket, and we have three, could be possessed but by all of our 15 students which are available. So that means we have 15 to the power of three. This is the number of uh, possible permutations with repetition. So we had no repetition here, and here we have with repetition. Repetition is allowed. So basically we have n to the power of k. This is the idea how many permutations we could have with uh, repetitions. All right? Hope you got the idea. And now let's move on to uh, permutations, uh, to combinatorics. My bad, combinations, not combinatorics. The playlist is combina uh, combinatorics. And now we're talking about combinations. So we're moving to two. We're moving to two. And we're taking alpha. So what does it mean we have two alpha? Well, we have unnumbered uh, seats. So like you're dancing on the dance floor. You have a stadium, okay, and just uh, no seats are available. You can only stay on the, on, on the ground and then you listen to your musician. I was um, attending some of those concerts. One of the very nice of this was Stink 2003 in Cologne, very long time ago. Yeah. So, uh, by the way, Stink is one of the best. Big up at this point. Okay. So we, if we have two um, alpha, we are having unnumbered combinations. So we're dancing on the floor and we have one ticket per student. So that means the situation we've been talking about permutations where we left 12 out and we didn't care about their permutations, but the first three were important because we could make a distinguishing between C1, C2 and C3 is now slightly different. We do not care about seats one, two, and three, they're just equal. So three persons are get, each is getting a ticket and those tickets are of the same value. So uh, there is no distinguishing between better seats or worse seats. They're of the same value um, just to attend the concert. So that means we're having N choose K because we don't care about the chosen three, but we don't care either about the unchosen 12. So the situation here would be 15 choose 3, or if you remember, n choose 3. So n choose k in this case, or 15 choose 3. Maybe you can put it on your calculator. And what we're having here is, well, did I compute 15 to the power of 3? I'm, I haven't, but uh, sorry, I just memorized it. You remember we had 2,730, and obviously it should be more, right? We have 15 to the power of 3, and we have kind of more positions. So 225, I think it was uh, 3,000. Well, let me quickly compute it. Feeling terrible about it, but 225 times 15, we got 2,250. And if you remember, multiplying times 5 means multiplying times 10 divided by 2. So we have the half of this, which is 1,125. So we are getting 3,375. There you go. Okay. I was kind of expecting this value. So way more than this one, right? Okay, now I'm back. So we got 15 choose 3, which means we have 15 factorial divided by 3 factorial uh, times 12 factorial. So it's 12 factorial times 13, 14, 15 divided over, uh, what do we have? We have 1, 2, 3 times 12 factorial as well. Boom, boom. We got 5 here and we got 7 here. So we got 35 times 
13, so way less. Right? 35 times 13, it's 350 and 105 more, 455. Okay, and now the last situation. And um, yeah, before I do the last one, we have n choose k. And this is a combination and we have no repetitions, right? So combination. without without reps okay and now to beta slightly more complicated but let's let's try to understand it and let's derive the formula here maybe i'll derive the formula first and then we apply it so now we have 15 students and um, um, we do not care about the places they are unnumbered and everybody could take as many cards as, as he wishes or she. All right, so that means we have um, three students are being chosen and the first one is so uh, uh, happy to have uh, the situation to get to this concert. So he's picking all of the three cards and even the second and the third student are also lucky to be chosen three. They are um, left empty, okay? So they don't get any tickets. Okay, how can we imagine this situation? Well, uh, we are talking about uh, slots in a box, maybe, and balls, okay? So imagine we have, like, uh, we have 15 students, and every student, so this is slot number one, slot number two, number three, number four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, elf, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and that will be 15. So look at this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, my bad, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now we have numbers and we have those walls between the boxes. So how many actually bricks do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So, in order to produce 15 slots, we need one less the number of the bricks. Basically, if we have n slots, we have n minus 1 bricks. Okay, does it make sense? And now we're placing the balls. So, let me just simplify it. Let's move away from 50. Let's say we have five boxes, okay? It's easier for me to to manage the bricks we got four bricks and I have so five boxes five slots and let's say still three balls so how can I compute all the possible outcomes well remember every student is allowed to take as many balls as he wishes so for example uh, the first student is picking all three balls that's fine why not but it could be also the case. So let's let's write it maybe not this way, but let's put it maybe this way. So our whole picture is we're having three objects of one kind of value and four more objects of another kind or another value. So our our length, the total length of the string is seven, three plus four. But those four are bricks that are coming from the number of the stocks. The slots okay so don't forget this that means this is what would that mean well that would mean we have three boxes three balls in number one student and that's it all right but what would that be one ball one ball here or maybe two balls and two more bricks that would mean the first student is getting one ticket or one ball the second ticket the second student is getting two tickets the number three, number four, and number five are uh, having no tickets. And as you can see, this is still a combination. Our string is containing still seven symbols, three balls, and four bricks. See what's happening? With those four bricks, we are illustrating five slots and three balls. And we are now permutating them. The way we like, we not only permutate, but also combine because we don't care. About, there is no distinguishing between balls and bricks. 
So we're combining them the way we like. And how many ways do we have to combine it? Well, in this case, 7 choose 3. In this case, 15 choose 3, right? Well, not quite, not 15. 15 minus 1. All right, choose 3. Is that correct? No, it's not, because we are combining balls as well. So three more balls are coming here. So the number of the elements is 14 bricks, which we have now. It's 15 minus 1, and three more balls. So I'm writing it this way. Of course, I can compute minus 1 plus 3 or 15 minus 1, but I don't want to do this. And we are picking either three balls or uh, 14 bricks. Let's call it this way. And this is what we have to compute now. That's it. So we got, as you can see, 15 minus 1 is 14. So uh, 17, right? Choose 3. What is 17? Choose 3. That's 14 factorial times 15 times 16 times 17 divided over 3 factorial times 14 factorial. That's why I'm writing it this way. So we cancel. This is 6. Uh, okay. 15, 16, 17, 1, 2, 3. 2 and 16 are giving you 8. Here we get 5. So it's 8, 40 times 17, 680. So that would be combination, combination with repetitions. And the formula for this is n minus 1. This is very crucial for you to understand that this minus 1 is coming from. Now plus k, because we're producing the string out of n minus 1 bricks and plus k balls. And now we are picking either k balls or n minus 1 bricks. Let's put it this way. All right. I hope it was clear, guys. Thanks for watching and see you soon in my next videos. Bye-bye. All the best.